the 2014 elections were clearly a watershed uh, for many reasons. I mean, I think uh, for the first time since Rajiv Gandhi won a sweeping mandate uh, way back in 1984, for the first time now, you have actually uh, a, a government that has got majority uh, in the Lok Sabha. So in some senses, it's quite clearly a discontinuity uh, in Indian politics. In fact, that's one of the arguments that this book makes. I mean, that the Modi has the potential to mark the beginning of, a, shall we say, the third republic in India's political evolution. Uh, that you had uh, one phase, uh, which was the from Jawaharlal Nehru to Rajiv Gandhi, which was a stable Congress-led governments significant majorities uh, and that there was a particular orientation of uh, national policy, whether it was non-alignment externally or uh, self-reliance internally uh, or socialism, that there were a set of broad uh, guiding principles that were there in the first republic. And then you had the second republic, shall we say, from 89 to 2014, where a series of coalition governments uh, which had to undertake significant reform, for example, on change of economic direction a readaptation to a different world because the Soviet Union had collapsed, the Cold War had come to an end. Mm -hmm. So you had a very a distinct set of policies in the Second Republic. So in some senses, what uh, what we're arguing here, mm -hmm. that Modi has the potential uh, that not only getting a majority in the Lok Sabha, that he had promised, at least he tantalized the nation that, look, he can take the nation in a different direction, mm -hmm. uh, give it a new, uh, shall we say, a, a set of ideas. So that is what, I mean, the book doesn't conclude by saying he's already done it, but yeah. uh, given the potential of the mandate 2014, uh, had that uh, idea. So that's why I uh, wanted to necessarily focus on him. What he's done with the U.S., because the change of direction with the U.S. was really set by Narsimara, which was a Congress government, followed by Vajpayee, which was a BJP government, and then carried forward by Manmohan Singh, a Congress government. But then... Uh, everyone assumed that given uh, Modi's problem on the visa with the Americans, because Americans had denied him a visa for 10 years, if there's one guy in this country who had a problem with the Americans, it's quite clearly Mr. Modi because as Chief Minister Gujarati came into the thing. So people had expected, in fact, a lot of people who were sympathetic to the BJP were saying, look, he should not visit the U.S. Uh, maybe he should go to New York to attend a U.N. meeting, but he should not go to Washington. Americans must apologize before he goes to Washington. But I think he understood quite clearly that, look, it's not about his personal relationship. Mm. And that the U.S. was critical for India's foreign policy strategy. Therefore, having a reasonable relationship with the U.S. makes sense. And I think the Americans too realized, look, it was a mistake the way they dealt with him in the past. So they reached out to him and he responded quickly. And what you've seen is quite unprecedented. In barely 12 months, uh, he had uh, two meetings with Obama. And I think what they did was really to solve a number of problems which Manmohan Singh could not, the nuclear liability issue, mm -hmm. uh, the whole question of uh, you know, defense cooperation, and a range of things which all got held up because of the weakness of the Manmohan Singh government. You had here a strong government led by Modi saying, look, we're going to clean up as much as possible. We're going to move forward. And irrespective of what happened personally between him and that. So I think that showed uh, a level of statesmanship and also a sense of uh, strategy that look, uh, that you got to, if you don't deal with the big, the beast in the world, uh, your capacity to deal with the smaller beast uh, was going to get a lot more constrained. The foreign policy has always been seen in Delhi as some kind of a morality play. That this is about, uh, you know, just articulating high principle. Uh, while I think uh, as someone, uh, not just as a chief minister, but I think someone who, who travel the world and I think the innate sense of Gujarati pragmatism which is you do in business you give and take but the way we define the foreign policy as if it is some kind of uh, you know India should not give on anything it should it should get all the time from others this kind of an approach which actually limited India's capacities significantly uh, while I think he has uh, altered that and I think he's shown the capacity to cut deals whether it's with the Americans or with the Chinese for example uh, with the, while the uh, Congress government was hesitant to do more economic cooperation with China, he's been far more uh, open for economic dealings with China. Yes. Or the way he's dealt with uh, NRIs. Uh, is, you know, there are Gujaratis are everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think being a Gujarati, I think he saw how the diaspora sees India. Mm -hmm. The question of how difficult it is to get visas, how difficult it is to... So I think he's, he's seen that and he's brought a level of pragmatism which is 
uh, idealism, yes, we need to have a strategy, we need to have big goals, but to achieve them, you need the capacity to look at the world in a pragmatic manner. 